Hi guys, welcome back. We've got a cool little experiment to do today. Now with the price of lead pellets seemingly going up week on week, we're regularly now seeing a lot of damaged pellets. Whether this happens at factory and they're just chucked in the tins or whether it happens in transit, we're still yet to decide that. But what we want to do is see whether or not these damaged ones are actually any good. I don't think they're going to be obviously as good as a fresh one from the tin in good order. Of course they can't be, but the whole idea of the test today is to see whether or not they are potentially any good do they just need discarding can they be saved for plinking could you potentially still use them for pest control and after that we're also then going to see whether or not we can straighten some of these back up or round them back out again to see if we can bring a level of accuracy back to them got the nipex here at the moment the gap between the jaws when they're set like this is 3.49 millimeters which is point one three seven of an inch whatever that happens to be just under three and a half millimeters so there's one millimeter of squish on these i'm going to try and do it as consistently as possible we'll do 20 or 30 enough for the testing it's fairly windy out there today which is pretty good because i've got an idea that with these defects in obviously the further the range is they're going to get exponentially worse so all of the defects will be amplified significantly in the wind so we're going to start off quite short with some out of the tin we'll run a few groups off now we have used these before these are the jsb exact shorts been using these for a fair while on the channel here a known good batch and they've been proven to be very accurate we're going to use the xti 50 today because it's the only rifle i've got that's got a traditional probe loading on it so it should seat these into the back of the barrel nicely i had wanted to use the anschutz actually today because i haven't used it for a little while but the way that loads i'm thumbing them into the back of the barrel i think the probe loading option is going to be better it should hopefully mean they get a bit further seated into the barrel so i'm going to get a load more of these squashed up and i will see you at the farm Right then guys, we're here. So we've got target out just under 25 yards. We're gonna start off with the exact shorts straight from the tin. As I've said before, we've used these previously. I've used them quite a lot through this. We know that they're pretty good and in calm conditions, I can put in some really nice tight groups with these. The wind is pushing straight off the North Sea, straight up my back at the moment. So although the target's in the sun, around the corners in the sun, we're in the shade and it's freezing cold here at the moment. I think the last things that we shot through this were the JSB Ultrashocks and possibly some lead free ones. So potentially the first group or so might be a bit wayward. We're not gonna be aiming off. We're not gonna be making any allowances for the wind. Just gonna be punting them straight down at the target and we'll be able to monitor whether or not the group sizes get exponentially worse with the damaged pellets. And more importantly after that, can we use my little tool to reshape them skirts to bring them back and actually make them usable? All right, let's go. Nice and low down to the ground. Can't fall off of the deck. Okay, a little bit over to the left. I think we must have adjusted the zero for the last pellets, but we'll run a little group off, maybe make a scope adjustment or just leave it as it is. You can see my little windicator sticks there, so you'll get an idea of what the wind's doing. It's swirling around a bit, but mostly coming straight from behind us, straight down the lane here. Okay, so they're mostly landing just a little bit to the left of the actual target itself. I don't think we'll bother to make a scope adjustment. The first shot was a little bit wayward, which is to be expected after using different ammo, but they look like they've tightened up quite nicely. Yeah, okay. Right, we'll just do one more group then. So we've done, what, five or six. They seem to have settled down all right. right let's concentrate for this second group. Okay, that looks a pretty good little group. Let's go and have a look at that, shall we? Right, well, that's a pretty good start. The first few that went through, obviously a little bit opened up. We were using them Ultra Shocks and Lead Free stuff through it last time, so just a couple of pellets to bring it back on song. These little squares are 5.5 millimetres, so that's the size of a 2.2 pellet. Most of those, that's probably 6 millimetres across, so really quite good. Gentle breeze running from behind us, so that's a perfect little control group. What we're going to do now is go on to some of the ones that we've squashed. So we'll do two groups again below them, and we'll see how it pans out. Now, ultimately, this here could do with a couple of clicks to bring it back over this way. We're not going to bother. So 
they will probably still come in a little bit to the left but what we're going to be looking for is any wild flyers any mad scattering on the grouping so let's get the little um, damaged ones out and we'll go again okay so that was a good start as per usual these little um shorts they run through this barrel round the end shoots actually really well so we've got one two three four five Right, I'm pop those in the lid. Oh, don't I drop that in the tin with all the non squashed ones? Right, they're the decent ones. We've got the squashed ones here, so we'll make a note of how well they load. So, this has got a traditional probe loading sort of pellet pusher, if you like. The Anschutz, you push them into the barrel with your thumb, a bit like you'd have on the majority of spring powered rifles, actually. I think this would be a better system. Once these are shoved into the barrel with the probe, there's a chance that they may get some degree of sort of straightening up or rounding back out or maybe it make them even worse i don't know so certainly be interesting to try them they look fairly consistently deformed i did quite a good job of carefully squashing them so hopefully that'll be the same Let's see how it goes shall we let's make a note of how well these load well, it didn't actually feel too bad right so we're gonna go for the Little target below the ones we've just shot. Let's see what happens when it gets 100 bar up its backside. Inconclusive with the first shot. Now it looks like it's a little bit higher than the control groups, but it's about the same position left and right. It doesn't feel too bad loading. that go? I can't have just gone straight through the same hole, surely not. we we'll have to check the GoPro for that one. Can't have missed the card, it must have gone through the same hole, surely. Right, okay. We we'll still bet, definitely check that GoPro footage because that hole looked pretty small, so maybe that second one missed entirely. this loading arrangement they don't actually feel that graunchy i've certainly shot a lot of the budget pellets the harder pellets that feel a lot worse than the squashed jsb going in well considering how flat they are i'm quite surprised i was expecting more than that what we do we're gonna have a quick look at that and then we'll have another go and then we'll go on to ones that will try and reshape them okay well that's surprising Yes, the group is larger than obviously the decent ones. This was the first ones. This was your proper control group, if you like. So it's double, nearly triple the size, but still that's about 11, 12 mil under half an inch outside edge to outside edge. So really not too bad considering. I mean, I definitely wouldn't ever want to entertain using these pellets in competition when they're squashed like this or even pest control really, but certainly not as bad as I was expecting. We'll go again on this one here, see whether or not we get much the same group or anything mad happens. I'm not sure about that second one. There's no obvious unusual holes around the target box here. So potentially we did stick two straight through the same hole. So we'll go again on this one and then what we'll do, I'll show you the little tool that I've got and see whether or not we can straighten some of these skirts out and get performance more like them first two lots. Let's do it. Right, but that was a surprise. The, um, the groups are actually not half as bad as I was expecting. They're probably still better than some of the budget stuff that we've used on the channel before. All right, let's go again. I'm going to do the same again, just to the right of the group we've already shot. Let's see what happens. See whether that was a fluke or not. The wind's picking up marginally as well. Ooh. Okay, so this is the first one that's felt really rough going in and it's got the biggest um, deviation from the target so yeah to be expected that didn't feel great right so that looks like the first one that you could sort of consider a little bit of a flyer interestingly i felt the rifle recoil a bit more than that so potentially there was a bit of blow by or something along those lines certainly didn't feel particularly nice it's not surprising when 
it looks as if only sort of a third of the skirt is in contact. Yeah, that one felt pretty rough as well. Well, I have opened up just a tiny bit. Now, of course, these are consistently squashed up as best as I can get them. I might actually, if we ever come back to this, I might make a little jig to squish them all up even more accurately. So we've got sort of a more consistent test, but the groups that we've got so far are really not that bad. I was expecting them to be an awful lot worse. What I'm gonna do now, we'll quickly go and have a look at that target down there. And I'm gonna show you the little tool that I've got that I use for straightening some of the skirts up. Right, here we go then. So that's the second lot with the squashed pellets. This one here is really the only one that I'd consider a flyer. You can see here that the groups are coming in just a little bit to the left of the target. They seem to be coming in slightly higher, which is strange with the squished ones, probably because they're not getting a very good barrel seal. Not quite sure why they're higher. It'd be interesting to try and run some over the chrono, but I don't think that's a particularly good idea with the little combro. There's a good chance we'll end up shooting it or something along those lines right what we're going to do now then we're going to straighten some of these squished skirts back up and see whether or not we can get something resembling the accuracy of the control groups right then what we've got here is just a little bit of stainless with this gentle sort of taper on the end of it sort of rounded off a little bit a lot of people actually use i think they're called well they're larger headphone jacks off of old headphones i think they're like a quarter inch jack or something like that basically it's got a tip on it that looks very similar to this so what we're going to do just got a little tiny piece of wood off cut here now this shouldn't have you shouldn't have to do this you should be buying pellets they should be arriving in good order and ultimately if they're not you should be giving your dealer some stick so that you either get a refund get a partial refund whatever get a replacement tin but it does happen of course they go through transit they probably get thrown around a little bit by your courier firms and things like that now it's surprising because that's actually quite hard to reform that back out to something resembling its original shape now actually yes you can see that it's not in great order but it's certainly relatively round there's a little bit of damage there that i've caused so we're going to straighten all of these out or we're going to certainly straighten out 10 of them we'll do two more groups again and see whether or not we've put any manners back into them yeah, not too bad. It certainly worked a little bit. It certainly looks a little bit better than it did before. So I'll carry on doing those and I'll get back to you in a moment. squished and knackered that one what you need really is a little divot in your little piece of wood there just to hold them upright i rolled out the back of that one and squashed it out the side so there's a bit more of a knack to this than you'd think it's quite a lot harder to actually do that and get them relatively concentric than you'd imagine that is definitely think you'd need to have something just to support them pellets so you can do it evenly it's definitely a lot harder to do than you expect it to be they seem to get squashed really easily but actually trying to get them back out to something resembling round it's quite tricky right let's get these um shots see how they go shall we right then so we've got the the reformed damaged ones let's see how they run shall we this felt like a normal one there is no unusual raunchy loading or anything like that. Oh, that's a pretty good start. These actually look pretty rough. You can see where they've had a little bit of aggro. You can see the skirts have got sort of shiny bits on now where the lead's been sort of stressed, if you like, back to a rounded shape from a flattened shape. That one climbed up a little bit. That was one of them ones that I'd sort of smeared the skirt a bit. Right, well, that's not too bad. So that is somewhere in between the two groups. It's, of course, not as tight as the control groups with the fresh pellets, but it's certainly a little bit tighter, a little bit less scattered than the flattened pellets. Second group, just to the right of the ones you've just shot.
I'll tell you what, that is quite surprising because some of these do look a little bit battered now. They're loading up, oh, saying that, that one's a little bit graunchy. Right, so that was the most graunchy loading of all the ones we've reshaped. Mm. Okay. That's pretty good, that is quite encouraging. Let's go and have a look. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not too bad at all. So start the control groups, a little bit scattered, just a few to lead in the barrel. Nice tight little group there, probably about six millimeters across, outside edge to outside edge, so absolutely perfect. Now, as you'd expect, the flattened ones have opened up quite a lot. Now, it was surprising that they didn't actually feel that bad going into the barrel. There was only one, this one, that dropped low that actually felt particularly bad. These ones here then, so these are the reshaped ones. Now, it shouldn't come to this. When we're ordering pellets, when we're buying pellets, we should expect to get them in good order. What we must start doing is really kicking off at the sort of suppliers, at the retailers, at the shops, whatever, that are supplying them. If they're arriving to us and they're bashed up, they should be held accountable. We should be getting decent pellets, especially if they're a premium pellet. If you're buying cheap pellets and they arrive a bit bashed up, well, what do you expect? You're not paying a huge amount of money. It's kind of par for the course. But when you're buying premium pellets, you should be getting in a premium product delivered to your door or from your shop but certainly looks as if using them on them little dibbers in the back of the skirt you can put some manners back into it now this group here not too bad at all again that's probably only about eight millimeters outside edge to outside edge so certainly wouldn't want to be using them for competition especially if i was driving halfway across the country anything that my reputation was relying on anything like that but they would certainly be great for plinking definitely guys don't start throwing them away if they're bashed up like that you can put some life back into them there's certainly going to be a lot of instances where you just want some pellets if you've serviced your rifle or you need to just run a few through obviously if you've got some that are marginally bashed up use those instead of the ones that are in good order obviously it makes sense to use the bashed up ones for tasks that aren't quite as important definitely won't be any good for chrono in either don't forget but maybe you've just served your spring rifle and you need to get a few through to make sure there's no lube or anything where it doesn't want to be you can use these ones definitely so i think what i want to do now i'm going to take you back home i'm going to see if we can modify that little base that i was using to press these into i think if we had a little cupped base to push them into with that dibber behind it i think we may well have a decent tool to actually put some life back into damaged pellets so i'll take you back home and we'll see if we can improve it we will see you in a minute right then guys we're back i've just done a little bit of experimenting off camera so all i've got is a little scrap piece of wood now i've had a 4.8 millimeter drill bit now of course these are 177 pellets 4.5 millimeters so it's just a little bit larger just drilled a hole the same depth as the length of your pellet so there's a couple i've already done that's one of the squashed ones just drop it in with your little dibber that makes life easier you've got one pellet that's ready to use again. Now, I certainly wouldn't want to use these for anything in competition, anything where your reputation relied on it. I mean, I'd be dubious about using these for pest control as well, but if you're using them short range, rat control, something like that, do double check, make sure that you're actually getting a decent group out of them because obviously you owe it to your quarry to be humane, but certainly that's now a usable pellet for the sake of a few seconds. Of course, we should be buying pellets that are in good condition, but it doesn't always happen that way. The results were pretty good actually you can see the ones that we reshaped at the bottom are not far off the control groups so certainly there is something to be said about reshaping your damaged ones regularly people i'll see that will get a few bits of squash skirts chuck the whole lot away and you sort of think well that does seem incredibly wasteful the difference between a reshaped one and a fresh decent one out of tin is quite small i certainly probably not good enough myself to notice the difference at the closer ranges i mean when you look at the groups there we was out in the wind are you going to notice the difference between that and that probably not you'd put it down to your wind a bit of jitter just misranging misreading the wind or whatever so definitely not worth chucking them away while we're talking about the pellets and the damage and things something quite funny happened recently h and n actually did a recall on some of their pellets on the barracuda fts and that's the first time in over 20 years that i've been messing around with this stuff that i've ever seen or heard of a pellet manufacturer doing a recall now i checked through all of mine i didn't have any that were subject to the recall they didn't actually say what the reason for the recall was but basically they said if you've got these batch codes whatever the details are probably still on their website it's worth checking if you've got any Anyhow, they were doing a recall, I spoke to one of my mates, it turns out that he had a couple of tins of the Barracuda FTs that were subject to the recall. <laughs> he swears blind that they're the best Barracudas that he's actually shot through his, so his aren't going back for the recall, but quite noble of him, I guess, to actually say we've got a problem. Looking through some of his ones, I couldn't see that there was anything obviously wrong with them, maybe something had got missed at manufacturing, I do not know, but at least they're on the ball and offering to sort of swap out ones that aren't sort of up to par, which... 
yeah, got to hand it to H&N really. It's no surprise that a lot of the top competition shooters are now moving over to H&Ns. They just seem to be a better option. And because they're made from a harder lead alloy than your JSBs and some of the other brands, they are likely to arrive to you with less damage. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I think the next couple of videos, depending on what the weather does, we may well end up doing a bit more woodwork projects in the shed. Hopefully we will get a few more breaks in the weather in the coming weeks. So I've got some really cool stuff that I want to push the ranges out. So that'll do it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.